Despite meticulous planning and successful implantation, eye wells may need to be explanted. Here is an image of an opacified plate haptic eye well. The lens opacified three years after implantation when the patient had retinal detachment surgery. This hydrophilic multifocal eye well is large and thick. It is therefore difficult to cut with scissors or fold in the anterior chamber. In our laboratory, we showed that this and other eye oils can be safely transected with femtosecond lasers. At low energy settings, no toxic gases or particulate residue was detected. We then determined the optimal setting for transaction and separation of this hydrophilic eye oil. We used the settings in this 59 year old gentleman with a with an opacified eye well. His vision was 6 on 24. You will note the white capsular adhesion at the edge of the lens. Dispersive viscoelastic was injected under the anterior capsule to separate the eye well from the capsule. The amount of viscoelastic in the bag needs to be limited as gas formation during femtosecond laser surgery will add further volume which could result in capsular block syndrome. The main wound was sutured and the patient was docked under the lens X gantry. A 5.8 mm lensotomy cross and capsulotomy template was positioned over the IOL. This was intentionally displaced inferiorly so that at least the distal end of the optic was completely cut. The anterior capsulotomy was kept at the same diameter as the lensotomy length so that in case the lensotomy came too far anterior, it would not cause an anterior capsular tear. The posterior capsule was faintly visible. The laser overlay was placed over the eye well to avoid the posterior capsule. Please note, the lensotomy profile does not match that of the IOL as it is designed for the crystalline lens. The ablation duration for the lensotomy at 8 microjoules energy level and 3 micron spot and 6 micron line separation was 45 seconds. The patient was then returned to the operating theater. More viscoelastic was injected into the bag to bring the optic out of the bag. An angle McPherson forcep was used to grasp the optic close to the center of the eye well and a rosin chopper was introduced through the side port. Using counter traction, the fragments were separated. The proximal portion of the optic was not cut because of the inferior displacement of the laser. This was cut using Vanus scissors. The proximal haptic was brought into view and cut. The superior wound was enlarged to about 3 mm with the added hope of reducing the width the rule astigmatism of 1.36 diopters. The lens was removed as a single piece. A one-piece hydrophobic lens was placed in the bag and the patient achieved 6-9 vision the day after surgery. At three months, there was no change in endothelial cell density or astigmatism. The image on the right shows the opacified eye well. The SEM shows the clean lasered edge with the yellow line marking the edge created by the vanus scissors. In a second case, the eye well subluxed following a complicated intravitreal gas injection. This had been done to displace a macular bleed. The IOL was repositioned to the sulcus, an anterior vitrectomy was performed and a malugan ring was inserted. The patient was docked under the laser and a false anterior capsule was presented to the lens X. The IOL was lasered with the same settings as in the previous case. The patient was taken back to the operating theater where the optic was again grasped midway before using the Rosen chopper to split the lens.
A sulcus IOL was placed. The patient remained at hand movements vision due to the macular bleed. The endothelial cell density reduced from 1960 to 1600, possibly due to the more complicated and prolonged surgery. SEM shows that the laser profile did not completely match the IOL profile and therefore the cut was not deep enough to transect the posterior 15% of the IOL. However, this did not uh, prevent us from separating the fragments. Tips and tricks. For both hydrophilic and hydrophobic acrylic IOLs, 8 by 3 by 6 laser setting is quite satisfactory. For in the bag transaction, a dispersive viscoelastic is ideal. However, care must be taken not to overfill the bag. A capsulotomy of the same size as the lensotomy is useful in avoiding an inadvertent anterior capsular tear with the lensotomy ablation. Lastly, in order to separate the fragments, it is easiest if the middle of the IOL is grasped by the forceps before conducting the chopping maneuver. In conclusion, the benefits of femtosecond laser transaction are the short ablation, laser ablation time and the ability to explant large lenses through small corneal incisions. These factors, we believe, enable quick recovery. Our preliminary results show that this procedure is safe. At low energy levels, no toxic gases were detected and there was no significant reduction in endothelial cell density. More work needs to be done to verify these results in a larger cohort. While hydrophilic and hydrophobic lenses can be cut easily, more work needs to be done to cut other materials such as PMMA lenses. Compressed PMMA lenses not presented here are easy to laser but harder to separate. Thank you for your kind attention.